black and white turn to color all around. Love is new in the Savior I have found. This is see the sun.
unction of praise all over this place. Hallelujah. We will sing and shout. And sing and shout. We'll open up our hearts and pour your praise out. We'll sing and shout. And we'll sing and shout. We open up our hearts and pour. Your praise is out. We get to sing and shout. Yeah. We sing and shout. We get to open up our hearts and pour our praises out. We sing and shout. Yeah. We sing and shout. We open up our hearts and pour our praises out. Lift your hands all over this room. We open up our hearts now. We open up our hearts. Hands are lifted, voices are raised. Voices are raised. There is nothing that our God cannot do. There is no miracle that our God cannot perform. We think about the last time, God, that you've blessed us. The last time that you opened up the eyes, God. The last time that you put breath in our bodies, Jesus. And with grateful hearts, we lift up our hands. Come on, open up your mouth. We lift up our hands. How great thou art. How great thou art. There is none like you in all the earth. None like you in all the earth. Father, this morning, we thank you now that you've done miracles already. But there is something that we need from you today. There is, a, there is a thing that we need that's from you today, God, that is bigger than anything we've ever needed before. I'm just that desperate, just that in awe of you to say that if you've done it before, God, I know that you can do it again. So, Lord God, miracles right now, I speak it over this place. Miracle signs and wonders, even in your home, I speak it, that is coming to your home right now. Lift your hands and just receive right now the miracle working power. God can do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we can ever ask or think. I dare you right now to lift your voices and believe for it. Believe for the miracle. Believe for the miracle. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah.
together the God who was, the God who was and is to come. The power of the risen one. The God who brings the dead to life. You're the God of miracles. The God of miracles. Oh, the God who was and needs to come. The power.
Amen. You may be seated in the house this morning. It's a wonderful thing because as I look over this congregation, I know so many of you, and I can literally see the miracle that you are standing here. If you are a miracle, or you know somebody that's standing beside you is a miracle, I want you to bring, give God a hand clap of praise for that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He is good. We just want to take a moment and welcome you this morning if it's your first time. We say, we have a saying here that says the first time you're a visitor, but beyond that, second time, third time, fourth time, hundred thousandth time, you are family. Right in the pew in front of you, there's a little card and it's a next steps card. If you want to learn more about our church, we just want you to grab that card, fill it out, and place it in the offering container as it comes by. And we just want to say we love you. We're thankful that you have chosen to worship with us this morning. All of you all across the tabernacle, we are thankful that you've chosen to worship with us this morning. I want to take just a moment, though, and acknowledge some very special friends. Um, it's been probably 20 or so years since they have been here, but um, they attended Valor back when it was World Harvest, probably Bible Institute. Was it World Harvest Bible Institute or Bible College then? Yeah, it's 20, 20 years ago, and um, they are now pastors in the Atlanta area. The name of their church is Worship with Wonders. They brought their babies with them, who are not much babies anymore, but Pastor Miles, Pastor Delena, and the family, well, I want you to stand. We'd love for you to stand just for us to say hi and acknowledge you. They are awesome. They are awesome, and it's so good to have them worshiping with us this morning. And, you know, around here, it is Easter, right? It is the Easter season. We say, really, the resurrection season, right? Amen. The same power that lived on the inside of us is alive. It raised Jesus from the dead. It is that season, right? It is that season. And we have a ton of things going on here. So we thought it would be fitting for maybe Cameron. And Cameron, where are your friends? I think you've got some friends that are coming to help you. They're going to share with you some Easter announcements. How many of you appreciate Miss Lisa Brunson and this amazing worship team? Now, as she said before, it is amazing during praise and worship to look out here and see so many miracles. And the Easter resurrection season, we have to remember, is not just about us, but this is the opportunity to bring people in to the biggest Sunday of the year, amen, the Easter weekend. And we have some friends up here right now. First, of course, the Easter Bunny in the house. And then we have Bella say, good morning, Bella. Say good morning, everybody, Bella. Good morning, everybody. And then we have Hannah say, good morning, Hannah. Say good morning, Hannah. Good morning. Now, Hannah, I know we have the is Easter Bunny, but there's a special friend that you have with you. Who is this? This is Sharky. Sharky? That is a real bunny, ladies and gentlemen. A real bunny. First, I'm like, oh, that's cool. They rented a bunny for the announcements. This is actually Hannah's bunny, right? Yeah. That is awesome. Let's give a round of applause for Sharky. So here's what's going down. We are getting ready for the biggest weekend, or I should say weekends of our church, of our faith. Before we get to the big Sunday, someone say one week. One week is Palm Sunday. Make sure you invite your friends. The kids are gonna be ministering. It's gonna be a fantastic Sunday. And then the following Friday, Good Friday service setting up for the biggest Sunday of the year. It's gonna be a Holy Communion service. Very, very powerful. And in addition to that, you can see right down here, we have this cross believing for thousands of miracles in our church. But at the same time, you might not know, but our high schoolers, our teenagers, our kids have been nailing their own miracles to their own crosses. And on Friday night, we are gonna bring all the crosses in here to believe for the greatest miracle season in our church, amen. Men. It's not just us, the kids are believing too. So Good Friday, that's 7 p.m., and we're gonna have an amazing time here, but then Easter Sunday. Somebody say, Easter Sunday! Yeah. Now, Bella, you're a scientist, right? Yes. So this is very fun. Bella is so cute because the kids have Easter fusion. Somebody say, Easter fusion. 
The kids are gonna have really cool science experiments. It's kind of like COSI coming in. They're gonna learn about experiments. They're gonna learn about Jesus and then have a massive Easter egg hunt. Now you might say, Cameron, how many eggs is massive? If you have to even think about it, multiply that by a million. That's how many eggs we're gonna have here. It's an unreal number of eggs. So make sure you invite everybody you know for the Easter egg hunt on Sunday. And of course, we might have more special guests. Are you gonna bring your bunny, Hannah? Maybe. Well, here's the deal. This bunny and this bunny has a lot of work to do for the massive Easter egg hunt. And by work, I'm not going to go into details, but producing eggs. We need your help. All right. So we need you guys to go to the store, go to the dollar store, go to Walmart, Target, wherever you choose. We need your Easter eggs to bless the entire community of Columbus, Ohio. Again, 576,000 people. We have a lot of eggs to fill. So if you can, by next Wednesday, I'm sorry, the following Wednesday before Easter, bring your eggs with wrapped candies. I know your no-bakes are delicious. They're fantastic. But we need wrapped candies inside of the Easter eggs and drop them off in the Connect Centers in the foyers. Can you guys help us with this massive Easter egg hunt? And can we thank our wonderful guests this morning, the Easter Bunny, Bella, Hannah, and Sharky. Hannah, I have to ask you, why did you name it Sharky? I have no idea. No idea, it just makes sense, amen. Give them a round of applause, thank you guys. As you're applauding, if you guys can all stand, please, we're entering one of the greatest seasons, and we're in one of the greatest seasons of miracles that I've personally witnessed at World Harvest Church, and it is thanks to the leadership of our pastor and the prayers and the sacrifice and the miracle in his life that is outpouring and overflowing into us. So please, get as loud as you can. Let me have the loudest cheer ever for our pastor, Rod Parsley, coming up to the stage. I love you, Elder Gamain, but this might be one of the loudest cheers. You can do better than that. You can be seated. It's great to see you. How many of you are happy today? Oh, that was really, really bad. How many of you are happy today? I did. I have to figure out what kind of service I need to have here. I'm so glad to see you. I am very happy today because the Ohio High School Athletic Association moved us up an entire division without any additional student body. You know, that's supposed to be calculated what division you're in based on how many boys or girls you have in the high school. Well, they decided to put a new rule in and they moved us up a division anyway. So the schools we're playing, most of them are double and triple our size. But we just said, okay, okay. Look at somebody next to you and say, I've been fighting most of my life. Now, if you really mean it, look at somebody else who acts like they might have been in the same situation and say, I've been fighting all my life. That's true. I mean, I don't want to get into the biology of the whole subject, but uh, you're the little swimmer that could. There are about three billion others trying to get up those fallopian tubes, and you fought everybody else off and you made it. So you've been fighting from the very beginning. And uh, <laughs> I told those young men last night uh, who were last night uh, going into that game, they were 27 and 0, and uh, they were playing for the regional final in the Elite Eight, which would then move them into the Final Four in the state of Ohio. And uh, so I told them, I said, you've been fighting your whole life. Um, I think, I think they're all African American except one young man who is Caucasian. And uh, it's not hard to look at African American young men and say, y'all been fighting most of your life. And it's true. And thank God for Harvest Preparatory School and coaches like Coach Smith, Coach Dave Dennis, who moved these young men into the mentality that they are winners. 
and that they are men of character and men of purpose and hard work and they love God and they have Bible study in their locker room. They, they all have their own Bibles in there. They pray together. They witness for Christ together. And uh, last night I told them, I said, now you've been fighting most of your life and uh, you, you're going to have to fight tonight, but you are not looking to be a survivor. There's a difference in folks that fight and survive. And there's a difference of folks who fight and are warriors. Don't ever let anybody look at you like a survivor. I didn't, folks say to me, he survived cancer. No, I whooped a thing. I know, I know, you don't understand. I met it head on by the blood of Jesus Christ and I prevailed through him. Say, I'm not a survivor. I'm a victor because I'm a warrior. And those young men last night brought home the regional championship. They won that game. They are now 28 and 0. I don't, I don't know if it's ever been done before. I'm gonna find out this week. I doubt that any team moved in up a division ever went to the final four in the history of the state of Ohio especially undefeated 28 no there's coach there's me and coach there's coach and somebody oh is that elder was that elder you can be seated I'll tell you what an impact these folks have stand up elder G elder G after the game of course was in our locker room and I was in there and pastor Chad was in there and everybody was in there celebrating but elder G slipped out and the reason he slipped out is because the coach of the other team, a public school, the coach of the other team, Elder G walked up to him and, you know, two or three of the boys were crying. You know, they're still teenagers and they fought hard uh, and, and we won and they lost and that's difficult. And, and so Elder went up and shook hands with the coach and the coach was kind of you know, teary-eyed, understandably, for those boys. And, and Coach said, you know what? Those young men need to hold their head high. They, they represented themselves and their parents and their school with great, great uh, uh, honor. And, and while he was doing that, the coach said, would you come and talk to our team? And so one of our pastors went into the locker room after the game of the team that we were just in the contest with and ministered the love of Jesus Christ to those public school players. Now that is a witness. I'm gonna try again. That is a witness. And some of y'all that have been letting your teenagers slip aside, in the last 30 days, next harvest youth have grown over 100 students a week in 30 days. You ought, to, you ought to check it out Wednesday night, right? Wednesday night, so be a part of that. Anyway, I couldn't get up here and not talk about my boys. So this coming Thursday, they will play at the shot on the OSU campus in the, in the state semifinal. And when they win that, they'll play Saturday for the state championship. And we'll have tickets here. We're waiting, we're picking them up at OSU right now, and they will be here by the end of service. So everybody get your tickets at the end of service. I want to say happy birthday to Pastor Sergey Danilet. Stand up. Stand up, Natalie, his lovely wife. Stand up, Elijah. Stand up, Timothy. These are the pastors of Russian Harvest Church that planted less than six months ago with 140 people in their first service. And it's his 60th birthday today. And we honor you and we bless you and we thank God for you. Amen.
You may be seated. We started four, four churches in 30 years before God gave me the vision to win more souls by planting churches. This, uh, when I turned 60, I'm now 61. So we've been walking in that vision for a year. I just asked Pastor Chad, I said, how many churches do we have now started out of City Harvest Network? 230 churches in one year. Oh. Four in 30 years, 230 in one year. How good is God? Over, BC, over 80 percent of the people born again in America this year will be born again in a church that's two years old or less. So we want to win souls. We plant churches. Amen. I think we've got another 15 ready to launch in the next six months or so. So we thank God for City Harvest and we certainly thank God for Fias and Amanda. Stand up our Pakistan pastors, we are getting ready to send them back to Pakistan Tuesday, I think, Monday or Tuesday, tomorrow or the next day, because we said, look, you all have to get busy for Easter. And they said, oh yes, pastor, that's a wonderful time for miracles, signs and wonders. Now we sent them over there the last time and they planted five new churches out of that crusade. So we now have 13 churches in Pakistan planted in the last 12 months. That's over a church a month. Oh, I forgot to tell you, there are over 3,000 people in attendance in our churches there this morning hearing the gospel of Jesus Christ. Every one of the converts in those churches is a former Muslim in Pakistan. I thought you could give God a little bit of glory for that. So they're headed back over there. They, they, they have a pastors and leaders conference. They have a major crusade. They have services all week. They're going to have 20,000 people in their crusade. And uh, I remind you, 20,000 people in a nation where 96% of the people are Muslim. Do you ever watch the news? Pakistan. That's why did you sit down? That's where these young people take this message. And that's where they're going tomorrow or Tuesday. And we bless them now. Reach your hands toward them. Father, I thank you. It's it's so simple, Lord, when we trust you. We bless you and praise you that you surround Fiaz and Amanda and their team with favor as with a shield. That you cause them to increase in wisdom and favor, in stature with you and with men. I thank you that because their ways please you, you cause even their enemies to be at peace with them. I thank you, Lord. I thank you for the souls that are coming into your kingdom between now and Easter in Pakistan. I thank you for an anointing of miracles, of signs, of wonders, of healing, of deliverance. And Father, we bind every principality and power. We bind the rulers of the darkness of this world. We bind spiritual wickedness in high places. We bind every demon spirit and we loose a seven times greater anointing than has ever been released in the nation of Pakistan. We receive it, we believe it, we glorify you for it now in Jesus' name. And all God's people shouted. Well, I haven't done this thing by myself for the last 40 years. I've had a whole lot of help. None more significant than the gentleman who's about to approach this pulpit right now. I love him with all my heart. He's my pastor. I trust him because I've proved him. And I promise you, 
any word out of his mouth is truth and will bless you, your family, everything you set your hand to and everybody you love. You will be different by just having the opportunity to encounter him today. We all love him with all our heart. Welcome Senior Elder Bill Canfield. Come on, let's thank God for the greatest pastor in our generation, Pastor Rod Parsley. Hallelujah. Oh, we thank you, God. Amen. God bless you. Thank you so much. You may be seated. Uh, oh, you know, it's just a great place to go to church. It really is. It really is. And uh, I thank God for every one of you that are here. Thank God for everyone who's joining us at World Harvest Church Elkhart, our great campus there in northern Indiana. Thank God for everyone who's joining us online. And everyone is about to receive something from the hand of a gracious God. Can you say amen? amen. Praise God. Now, I got I to gotta just tell you, uh, the resurrection season is the greatest season of all, especially here at World Harvest Church, since God spoke to Pastor Parsley that vision back in 1985 and we're all praying we're all fasting we're all believing god to gather our resurrection seed together but one of the things that people sometimes forget about is that it's one of the greatest opportunities for you to invite your family members and friends because if they come here and they're lost they'll be saved before they leave this place on resurrection sunday amen amen and the ushers have invitation cards. They're passing them down the aisles right now. We want you to take a few of these and don't take them and not use them, but take them and give them to people that you encounter out there in the marketplace this week and tell them, we, wanna, we want you to join us at World Harvest Church on Resurrection Sunday. There is nothing like it in the world than being here at World Harvest Church on Resurrection Sunday. So just take a few of these and pass the stack along and make sure everyone has an opportunity to get a few of them and use them this week. And you'll be surprised how open people will be to a simple invitation accompanied by a smile. Amen. Amen. And it'll be, it'll be a great opportunity for you to invite people that need to come and hear about the saving grace of Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, I got to tell you one more thing. I got to tell you one more thing. I didn't start this trend but I'm happy to be a part of it. I, a couple years ago, I just decided to let my beard grow. Pastor let his beard grow. It's all right. Hey, let me tell you how I know it's all right. Even the Easter Bunny has a beard now. That's the first thing I noticed about it when it came out here. Now, if the Easter Bunny has a beard, I don't want to hear any more flack about beards, all right? It's just all right. It's just all right. <laughs> Hallelujah. Have you got a Bible with you? Go ahead and open it to Philippians chapter 4 because I got a word for you. It's not going to take very long, but I believe it'll have a, a, a long lasting impact in your life. Philippians chapter 4, the last chapter of the book of Philippians. I want to read to you just a few verses of scripture here. The apostle Paul was thanking his friends in the church in the city of Philippi for being involved with him, helping him financially. And I want to read to you what it is that he said to them. Beginning in verse 15, Philippians chapter 4. Here's what the Word of God says. Now you Philippians know also that in the beginning of the gospel, when I departed from Macedonia, no church shared with me in the matter of giving and receiving except you alone. Even in Thessalonica, you sent aid once and again for my necessity, not because I desired a gift, but I desire fruit that accumulates to your account. But I have everything in abound. I've been filled, having received from Epaphroditus the things which were sent from you, like a sweet fragrance, an acceptable sacrifice, well-pleasing to God. But my God shall supply your every need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Somebody ought to shout right there. 
because Paul's not just talking to his friends in Philippi, he's talking to his friends here in Columbus. He's talking to his friends in Elkhart. He's talking to his friends anywhere where you're joining us online. God has got something in mind for you this morning. You might as well go ahead and shout about it right now. Hallelujah! Think about that, my brother and sister. My God shall supply all your need according to his riches in, not according to your need, but according to his riches in glory, which don't have any limit. And of course, we know that God is not just a need meeting God. He will grant the desires of your heart. One of the things that Paul prefaced that verse of scripture with is congratulating the Philippians on regular and systematic sowing, which results in regular and systematic reaping. Hallelujah. Somebody said, well, I haven't been regular and systematic in my sowing. Well, you can start today. Amen. God won't even remember what it is that you did in, in the past. You just repent and get started today. And thank God, the same blessing and the same benefit will be available to you. Hallelujah. Somebody said, well, I'm not sure I understand how that works. Well, let me just explain it to you this way. You do the sowing and let God do the growing. Uh, all you have the responsibility to do, my brother and sister, is get a seed in the ground and let God do all the rest of it. He'll work it out. I guarantee you that he will. Yes, he will. Somebody said, yeah, but I, I don't understand. It's not necessary for you to understand how God does what he does. It's just necessary. All that is required of you is to obey. Our blessing is not in our understanding. God does all kinds of stuff that we don't understand. Why did he forgive your sins? Well, I don't understand that. But we still receive the benefit of it. Just be obedient to what it is that he tells you to do. Let him take care of the rest of it. You get a seed in the ground and let God multiply that seed. You take something out of the natural realm, place it in God's hands in the spiritual realm, and let him work on that thing the way only he can work on that thing and return it to you in a blessing that is whatever you need or whatever you desire. Now, I just want to give you a little example. I've been waiting for a long time to do this. Now, if you're getting your seed ready, you can make it in a check, make it payable to World Harvest Church, or you can put it in that envelope that you find in the pew in front of you. If you're giving cash, if you're giving by means of credit card, you can fill out the envelope. If you're giving by means of smart giving or the, the electronic giving on your mobile device, you can follow those directions up there on the screen and you can give that way. That's the easiest way of all. But I, I got something I got to tell you. Last fall, we were believing God, my wife and I were believing God for uh, a front sidewalk to our house. We got the house, we got in the house. It was great, it's wonderful, love it. But we didn't have a front sidewalk. And you know how everybody from Amazon and all the parcel services, you know, you gotta walk through the mud to get to the front porch. So we had to have a, had to have a front sidewalk. You don't know how that's gonna happen. Well, I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're going to sow a seed. And we planted a seed believing God for concrete. <laughs> I don't know how God's going to work that out. I don't know how God is going to take that seed that I placed in his hand and make concrete out of it. But we just believe in God. Our, our job is not to understand how God does it. Our job is to believe that God will do it. I don't know what it is that you're believing God for today. I don't know what it is that you need. I don't know what it is that you desire. But if you place a seed in God's hand, God will turn that seed into whatever it is that you need. So we sowed that seed and we believed God. And I just want to show you what the result of that is. Go ahead and put it. The, there it is. There it is. There it is. That's what happens when a seed grows when you put it in the hand of God. Now, I got even better news for you, my brother and sister. 
that concrete is paid for. We didn't have to borrow money to put it in there. Hallelujah. So look at somebody next to you and say, what is it that you need? Look back at them and say, what is it you want? Uh, God will bring it to pass if you'll place a seed in his hand. Hallelujah. I got another seed because I'm believing God for some more concrete. We don't just need a sidewalk. We need a driveway. And one of these days, I'm going to show you a picture of a, con <laughs> of a concrete driveway. I don't know what you're believing God for, but whatever it is, I'm believing God with you, and we're going to rejoice together in this season of miracles. Somebody glorify the Lord. Go ahead, Pastor. Now, you always, you always have haters, you know. Yeah. When we, be seated. When, you, when we won that uh, regional title uh, last night, you know, folks said, well, I wonder how many fans we'll have there for the state. And somebody else said, well, all the haters will be there. <laughs> and, uh, you know, that's all right. That's all right. Because we are fighters. Yes. Uh, let, me, let me have that. There's a horrible ring in this, fellows, if you could help me. Uh, just let me have that letter. Just give me, bring me that. Everybody say, thank God for Pastor Chad. Thank all right. Now, here's a letter I received, Elder Canfield, 1984. Now, everybody say 1984. That 33 years ago. I, I got this letter 33 years ago. 30, you ought to keep stuff, you know, like your husband. Anyway, well, 33 years ago. 33 years ago, I was but a boy. God spoke to me. He gave me a specific instruction. An instruction with specificity. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, when you're, what, what would I have been, 28 or something like that? Something like that. You know, old enough to know better, but young enough to not care. Anyway, I, I got this word, and you were there. And... Uh, the Holy Spirit said to me, I want you for seven weeks, seven weeks, I want you to make the focus of what you do twofold. Number one, I want you to teach people that poverty is a curse. Okay, see, I'm, and 33 years later, I'm, I'm still at it because some folks are like, you, isn't it unimaginable that you would take a posture to embrace poverty? No, 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 no. How many of you, let's do it again, elder. Let's do it again. That was, that's a beautiful home, by the way. And Miss Paula, I have not been over yet for lasagna and pineapple upside down cake made in an iron skillet. That's what Miss Paula makes me. See, I didn't get this way looking at it. What are you laughing at? Huh? You're on the schedule. I'm on the schedule. But I didn't want to come before you had a sidewalk. <laughs> That's a brand new home, right? Yeah. Yeah. You should rejoice. That's a brand new home. You'd like to have a brand new home paid for. Why don't you shout a little bit? Yeah. Now, if there's anything we're not around here is religious. Yeah, we just rebuke that spirit. Hallelujah. Poverty is a curse, so let's do it again. How many of y'all had slept in a bed last night? Anybody didn't sleep in a bed? 
Okay. So everybody say, check. All right. Uh, how many of you somewhere have a refrigerator with some food in it? See who I'm going home with. I don't eat pork. All right. All right. Looks like everybody. All right. Look down at your feet. Now, how many of you somewhere, I know Pastor Cal does, because he always has these boots on that just, I'm like, I tell him every, I, I say, your pastor doesn't have those. Just to let him know that I'm open to blessing. What size? I have beautiful other feet of those who carry my work. So what size would my feet be? Feet, one feet is a foot. What are you laughing at there, Benny Hinn? You looking like Benny Hinn today. <laughs> Say what? Sir. Benny called. He wants his suit back. <laughs> I'm just playing with you. Benny actually did call me yesterday, but... He didn't say nothing about your suit. So, so, so Benny called me this week. Bishop George Bloomer called me this week. Paula White called me this week. All three of them telling me, would you please go to Africa so the continent will leave us alone? So I'm going to go. I'm going to go. Sometime between now and Easter, I'm going to go. Or not even between Easter and Dominion, I'm gonna go. Right. I'm gonna go to Nigeria. I'm gonna go to U Uganda. Is that Uganda? Huh? Ghana. Ghana. Okay. I'm gonna go to Ghana. I might as well drop down to South Africa while I'm there. Go to Durban, and I'm gonna go to Ireland, and I'm gonna go to the United Kingdom. I'm gonna go to London. And then I'm going to come back here. I don't know. I might drop off at Pakistan. Anyway, are you having a good time at the harp today? Yes. So beautiful are the feet of those who carry to the world my word and my name. That was a song by Jenny Grind. You don't know who she is. No, that's right. You should. Anyway, so what size is my foot? Well, how much is a foot? You from Canada, you don't know. You use the metric system. 37, 30 centimeters has nothing to do with caterpillars. It's 12 inches. So my foot is a size 12. Now, since I was so rudely interrupted, so elder, I just feel good today, man. I like, I'm like on overdrive in the Holy Ghost because God is like doing miracles yeah. everywhere yes, and I'm just sitting back and watching him. Right? I'm just sitting back watching him. Every week people say, are you going to make any more videos? We've been making five videos a week about significant miracles and I finally told him, I said, just stop. We can't keep up with it all. I mean significant miracles. We've had $300,000 miracles. Not the church, people. Look at it. Okay, he was about to drop three more, but he can't find anybody open to receive it. I dare you to shove your neighbor and say, today I become a world-class receiver. What's that? What's that? What's that? More than enough. Overflow. And double for your trouble. Now everybody on your feet that believes God, come on. 
Oh, I believe God is the God of salvation. Then my question for you is, how much is too much salvation? Yeah. Okay, settle that one. Okay, then how many of you believe in healing? You get cancer in your vocal cords and all of a sudden you'll be a believer. How many of you believe in healing? Okay, let me ask, ask you, how much is too much healing for you? Like you get to the point where like, you know, your fawns in the spiritual mirror. You happy days? Any, anyone? Bueller? Bueller? Anyone? Where you comb your hair like fawns in the spiritual mirror of the word of God and you say, hey God, too much. I'm just too healthy then why do you act that way about your finances? Come on now. Come on now. Okay, I got four rows applauding because they know I can see them. I'm helping you right now. Excuse me while I just calm down and make so much sense to you. If money is evil, what are you doing working 40 hours a week to get it? Well, I got to get my needs met. Well, first of all, if that's your mentality, I promise you, your needs are not met. I promise you, you don't live in your house, you live in a bank's house. I promise you, you don't drive your own car. I promise you, you're making a payment to somebody else and gonna end up paying four times more for that car than it was worth the day you bought it. Cause you bought in to the Babylonian system instead of the kingdom system. Okay, I'm not getting any applause, but it's okay with me. Cause like, I'm not nervous. I've been doing this 33 years. I know the haters are everywhere, yeah. but I found a scripture that said all the abundance laid up for my haters is going to be transferred to the kingdom. Yeah. So I don't care. I'm cool. Yeah. Yeah. I'm cool. Yeah. Do you think planting 18 churches in Pakistan is cheap? Every church plant cost between a hundred and a hundred and fifty thousand dollars. We got 220 of them in a year. You think that's cheap? It's quiet. It's quiet in here. It costs money to preach the gospel. Okay. You can sit down a minute. Cause I feel like I've already lost this. You can sit down a minute. No, not you. I need you, man. You, whoo. Just, just rub on me. Yeah. Give me some of that sidewalk. That's the way you to camp. You walk up that sidewalk, man. He like, oh, let's see. What could he do? I went to the enemy's camp and I took back my sidewalk took back my sidewalk i just took back my sidewalk well i went to the enemy's camp and my seed possessed the gate of my enemy and let my sidewalk go ah. i feel the anointing Yes, I do. I feel miracles. Yes, I do. Somebody's about to get a financial breakthrough you didn't even dream was possible. This is work is saying a little bit, Elder. I got big lips. Sometimes they get dry. I was going to do Ancestry.com, but I was a little bit concerned about what I might find out. You'll think about it on the way home. Okay? Okay? You just go ahead, Holy Ghost, and help your fine Self. Yeah. 
You want a confirmation? Three weeks ago, I gave you a report about a man whose business got a $100,000 miracle. Didn't I? Three weeks ago. Never had had one. Last week, to the spattering of popcorn applause, I told you he got it again last week. Two times, never done before, business 20 years old, but got a $100,000 miracle, turned around the next week, got a $100,000 miracle. Please tell me what this says. Don't use, don't use the name, but just read it. Third week straight, business has had $100,000 week. If it was your 300K, you'd be shouting about now. Well, I don't have a business. Well, get one. Won't you get one? Just go ahead and confirm your word. Just go ahead and confirm your word with signs following. We believe you. You're the God of miracles. We believe you. Let's see, tithe. Let's see, 10, 20, that'd be $30,000 tithe. That works. Be seated. Hallelujah. Now, where was I before I was so divinely interrupted? So, you have slept in a bed last night. You have a refrigerator somewhere with some food in it. Some of it may be growing other food. I was at somebody's house up there. I opened the door and I said, you... Is this a medical facility? They said, why? I said, you grow in penicillin in here. Just, so, and then look down at your feet. That's where I was. We were talking about feet. And then Cal, who's going to buy me a pair of boots like that, because I prophesied it. Don't be looking at me funny. God, I'm in God's account for shoes. Well, why am I not in God's account, Percy? You in the pay less account. You looking for a discount. Because you just got a little wimpy God who can just barely meet your needs. I've given away all my shoes. Several times. My mother passed, went to her reward. I don't know what I'm going to do with the woman's shoes. I'm just going to give them away. I'm like, <laughs> about half of them still in the boxes. And I'd ask her, I said, Mama, where'd those come from? Oh, somebody sent them to me. Uh -huh. Where'd those come from? Oh, I was at a church. They bought me five pairs while I was there. Well, how does that happen? Well, you just keep giving them away. And then God lets them flow through you because you know you're just going to give them away. Hallelujah. Pastor. What? Somebody might say, well, you haven't ever given me a pair of shoes. I, I'm not sure you've given anybody any shoes. No, you I get, throw listen, a pair at you. Listen. What? You gave me these shoes. I did? Yeah. Well, put so my pair on that cross. So it's no Put my wonder. Pair on that cross. It's not sacrilege. It's no wonder that people give you shoes because nice you shoes. give. Yeah, they are, like and they last shoes. a long time too. They do. They're anointed. Well, they do if you take care of them. <laughs> That's the reason God's not going to give some of you a car. Number one, you never gave one away. Number two, there are enough French fries in it to feed a small <laughs> army in the floorboard. <laughs> take care of what God gives you. Wash the thing. Yeah. I feel my help coming. We're looking like you live in a barn. 
Amen. Hallelujah. So we got those three things, right? Yes. We got a bed somewhere. We got a refrigerator somewhere with some food in it. Third thing is, look at your feet. If that is the, if you have more than the pair of shoes you have on, scream just loud as you can. Oh, that's what I thought. So then you don't take exception with God providing your needs, lest you be barefoot. Why don't you go sleep in the street? Give your bed away. See, it's idolatry to create a God that's conducive to the lifestyle of your comfortability. Tweet that. Come on. Come on. See, right now, you are living at whatever level you are comfortable with. And what you are comfortable with, you will never sacrifice to change. That's right. Tweet that. You won't change it. When comfort and contentment and convenience no longer pacify you, the result will be confrontation designed to create permanent change. Tweet that. If you won't confront it, you won't change it. If all you're going to do is complain about it, you will never change it. you got to gird yourself up with truth, and you got to confront the situation head on. In other words, you have to start a revolution. Shout overflow. Too much. More than enough. The reason I pointed out those things to you, I prayed for you this week. Every morning, yes, every morning and every night. Stand up, stand up. How is your heart? Are you okay? You're not doing well, are you? Kinda. Well, let me get down there. Let me get around the cross here. Because I don't like to pray for things and not have the result that I'm believing for. Father, just lay your hands right where your heart is, baby. In the name of Jesus, I believe you, Father. Heal this heart. Take the grief away. Take the sorrow away. Bring comfort and peace in the glorious name of Jesus. I believe you to do it. Now raise your hands and say, I believe. I believe. I receive it. I receive it. Today. Today. I will not look back. I will not look back. I will praise God. I will praise God. It is done. It is done. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Mm. Loves you. That that young lady came to my mother's memorial service from the hospital losing a child. Straight from the hospital she came to honor my mom. So she deserves to have my mom's anointing released to her. I just heard the Holy Ghost. The minute I stretched my hand out, I heard the Holy Ghost say, she has it. She, she has it. Okay. So the reason I ask you those three things is very simple. Because if you have those three things, then you are right now in the top 25% of the wealthiest people alive on this planet right now. So don't be looking at me like you've got something against prosperity. You are wealthy right now. You think wealthy is a million dollar house. Wealthy is a house. You think wealthy is you got 12 bedrooms. Wealthy is you got a bed. You think wealthy is caviar. I wouldn't need it if they gave it to me. 
But I'm looking around this room right now, don't look like nobody undernourished. So you need to lift your hands, get on your feet, and thank God for your wealth. You need to thank God right now that where you live, according to God's word, is full of wealth and riches. When I say three, if you have anything you could give away, shout now. Keep shouting. Keep shouting. Somebody just got handed $15,000. Glad you had shout. A lot of times the problem is you act like you deserve it. Here's when you deserve it. When your faith reaches out, grabs a hold of it, and you use it to preach this gospel. Thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it is he who gives you the power to get wealth. Shove your neighbor and shout, I got Holy Ghost power on me right now to win the lost, heal the sick, and be a blessing financially to the kingdom of God. I'm wealthy, I'm healthy, I'm wise, I'm generous in the day of our visitation. Now give God praise for it. All right, Elmer. So be seated. So be seated. So stop going around. Man, I have a problem. I have a problem with prosperity. I do not have a problem with God fulfilling his word, which is very simple. He takes pleasure. Now that actually means he stands up, gets off his throne, and dances around it, thinking of the prosperity of his people. That's what the Bible says. I don't know what Bible you read, but that's what the Bible says. And you just forgive me if I take a little bit of emphasis twice, one time a year, to get these truths past your religious devils and into your heart so the kingdom of God can be built. Some of y'all like the little deacon sitting on the front row. Benny. You like the little deacons sitting on the front row. Preacher got up and kind of timidly he said, let the church rise. Amen, said the deacon. Woo! Let her rise. It is a black church. No, I'm just kidding. And, and the preacher felt better. Amen will help you, you know. Yeah, yeah. Thank you for your enthusiasm. <laughs> uh, so he said, I see, the church rise. Let the church stand. Now he's going all Baptist. Amen, said the deacon. Let the church stand. Ooh. Let the church move. Said, yeah. <laughs> said the deacon. Amen. The preacher really feeling it now, boy. He, he said, Ah, let the church fly, said the preacher. Woo, amen, said the deacon. Now it'll take money for the church to fly, said the preacher. Let her walk, said the deacon. Amen. I said amen. 
you don't ha I don't have a problem with God's people prospering. I don't, why would you have a problem with that when 50%, 50% of the teaching Jesus did in the four gospels surrounds itself with finances? I'm not talking about me. I'm talking about Jesus. You know, the one in the Bible. 50%. 60% of the parables of Jesus surround themselves with the financial strength of his kingdom. There are 500. How many of y'all believe we ought to pray? Pray without ceasing. Pray in your closet. Pray when you're walking. Pray when you're standing. God forbid that I should sin against him by failing to pray for you. How many of you believe we should pray? Pray in the spirit. Pray with the understanding also. Shall I continue? Pray. Just pray. Call unto me and I will answer thee. Show thee great and mighty things that thou knowest not. Ask and you shall receive. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. What are the first three letters in each of those a s k you can't just read the bible you have to read the bible ask you receive seek you find knock it shall be opened unto you jesus was quite a preacher so we should pray how do we know that well because there are 200 verses or 500 verses that tell us that 500 verses. Seems like God's emphasizing that. Except on finances, it's 2,000. 2,000 verses versus 500 verses. So my question is, what are we doing? If God gives us the power to get wealth, why don't we go get it? Get it. Get it. I mean, go get it. See, we're stuck in the mentality of need meeting. But the first miracle, give me that camera. The first miracle Jesus performed was not a miracle of need meeting. Most of you are getting your needs met right now without even expending any faith. You, I mean, you've been walking around your house. I just declare and decree a house. Thank you, Lord, for a house. No, you know why you don't do that? Because you're in one. I mean, did you walk here this morning saying, give me a car? No. But you think you're not wealthy? If you got here in an automobile, shout now. Did anybody ride a bicycle? Nobody rode a bicycle? In China, they get to church riding a bicycle. In China, where it costs one entire year's wages to buy a used bicycle. And you want to talk to me about you got your nose up in the air about a preacher? that wants you to prosper, here's where you are. Here's where you are. Well, I just think if they do that, you know, then people get rich and they, and they, you know, they give up on God and it's harder for a rich man to go to. Why don't you quote some of the 2000 scriptures instead of your pet one, which you don't understand to begin with. He didn't say it was impossible. He just said it's difficult. And the reason it's difficult is when people have anything, they get full of pride. Like you. Who think that it's wrong for God to bless you because you can't get your eyes off you long enough to realize you're in the top 25% so that you can meet the needs of the other 75% if you just get a hold of God.
don't get mad at me because I'm trying to get you into blessing. I'm not condemning you. You just want to have your needs met. Okay, come and shout. But at least believe with us for somebody to get beyond their needs being met so that we have the opportunity to use every resource available to preach the gospel. Blessed be the holy name of God. It is good, isn't it? Enough is never enough. And you don't believe that anyway, anywhere but sitting in here, watching on there. You don't believe that. When did you ever say, well, I've got enough. I've got my retirement. I, I'm good. I got, my, I got my government check. I'm good. Who can you bless on a government check? Are you leaving an inheritance to your children's children? No, what you're doing is helping to bankrupt the nation so every child's future is in jeopardy. Don't look at me funny. That's that other system. And if you're in it, I'm not condemning you. I'm giving you a way out. Get out of that mess. I know where I came from. I came from Mother Parsley walking to two jobs, living in a one bedroom apartment with two children and a husband on the third floor off Parsons Avenue downtown and cutting out cardboard and putting it in the bottom of her shoes to walk to her job. But she determined, I don't have to stay like this. Somebody needs to rise up. God, I feel the Holy Ghost in here. Shove somebody and tell them, rise up. Help me plan another church in Pakistan. Help me plan another church in Africa. Help me plan another church in Asia. Help me plan another church in California. Help me plan another church in Parkersburg. And churches that will preach something. That will preach you must be born again. That will preach the baptism in the Holy Spirit. That will preach biblical prosperity. Be seated. They're telling me I got to quit. Somebody wants to be set free. Somebody wants to be set free. Somebody told me the other day, they said, Pastor, now, I know you preach this thing about leaving an inheritance to your children's children. I said, I sure do. They said, well, my dad got a hold of that. I said, he did, yeah. I said, what happened? He said, he didn't leave me a penny. I said, what did he do? <laughs> he gave it to my kids. <laughs> well, amen. Amen. Hallelujah. What he's telling you is you're supposed to be a third generation blesser, not a present generation survivor. I give you the power to get wealth so that I, God, may establish my covenant in all the earth. 33 years ago, God told me, 33 years ago, somebody told me, well, Pastor, Jesus got crucified at 33. I said, yeah, but he got resurrected too. This is the 33rd year. That's important. There's a supernatural anointing on this word that has never been there before. In the 33rd year, we've been faithful. We haven't abandoned it. When does a word from God lose its power? 
Now when a word from God is given, reason never required. Takes faith to answer that door. Faith. Faith. Faith is always an act. An act. Faith without works, action. Corresponding action is dead. I believe, I believe this with all my heart. I talked to four preachers yesterday. I told them the same thing. There is a revolution right now. There's an uprising. People are getting tired of little milk sop, milk toast, evangelicals and 45 minute services and asking the Holy Ghost to leave. People, people are weary with it. There's no life in it. There's no life change in it. Lots of people come, but has anybody changed? Somebody told me the other day about a life change. Who was it? Was it you, Chad? Somebody told me about a life change that happened around here, and I said that when they said it to me. That's what I'm about. Life change. Do you remember what it was, Lisa? You do? Okay. Everybody say hello. Aren't you glad to have her back? Oh, my goodness. Okay. There was, there was a Valor student in Thursday's chapel. Hey, get online and watch Valor Chapel. You want Holy Ghost. And um, Michaela. She's actually here. I, I saw her while I was preaching. Stand up, Michaela. Michaela used to be on our platform, led worship. Now she's leading worship in a sister church. And Michaela, honey, there was something on you Thursday. Yes. Oh, how new and fresh and mature. And you used to be a singer. Now you're a worship leader. So beautiful. We're so proud of you. Woo. Give Michaela a great Valor Christian college graduate a good hand but in that chapel yeah. I mean the Holy Ghost came Miss Hannah thank God for Pastor Manny and Hannah and Elkhart today especially you folks in Elkhart shout now look the Holy Ghost Hannah shared her testimony first time in 20 years she never shared it incidents that happened 20 years ago to her and she got the courage in that chapel to share the abuse that she'd suffered and of course here come these valor young ladies and one of them began to weep and weep and weep she said from the time she was how old very young very, very young age. seems like they told me eight or nine years old she had been sexually molested by her own parents for 12 years. She'd suffered that. And I watched her. And I watched the glory of God come on her. And I watched all that lift off of her. You're not going to get that in some 45-minute lesson. Thank God for the power of the gospel to set men and women free. He's a God of miracles. He'll give you one too. But we've always had the haters, you know. We've always had the haters. 33 years ago, 33 years ago, I got this letter, which was the first time I began to share revelation about sowing and reaping a revelation seed a, a, a resurrection seed we ought to get that series i think i'm offering it on television right now but it is the original cds of me preaching this revelation thir over 30 years ago and it is rich i preached it four times a week for seven weeks about the third week in, and I got this letter. See, it says Word of Life member, 1985. What the letter says is, Pastor, I was about to leave the church. 
the second week after you started preaching what you've been preaching I had a dream it so disturbed me pastor because you were in the pulpit and you were preaching and all of a sudden the top of the building opened up and there was a huge grotesque demonic monster spirit and he said every time you begin to talk about that I see it he said pastor you have to stop this there's a monster coming if you don't stop this to devour the church God has shown me and I started rejoicing he said why are you rejoicing I said, well, you simply have the wrong interpretation, dear friend. What is happening is every time I preach this, the heavens are open to reveal the demonic spirit that's stealing from the church. And it is... I dare you to get up on your feet, point your finger and shout, enough is enough. Enough is enough. Poverty is a curse and I live in the blessing of God. Now if you really believe it, praise Him. I mean praise Him. Let the chains break. Let the bondages go. Satan, you lying, deceiving spirit, we rebuke you now. I shared that with him. Be seated. He wrote me back and he said, I wanted to tell you that my wife knew the truth two weeks ago. And God spoke to her that we should sow the equivalent of one week's salary. Because that's why I preached it for seven weeks. God, God said they won't be able to do it because they're so entwined in poverty and the spirit of Babylon that they couldn't possibly write out a check for an entire week's salary. Do you know that 72% of Americans, if they lost one paycheck, would be reduced to ruin? Bankrupt if they missed one paycheck. Although over a million dollars of average income passes through the hands of every American in their lifetime, at retirement, at retirement, 60% of Americans have to continue working and 50% survive below the poverty line after a million dollars has passed through your hands. Somebody knows something you don't know. Amen. So they said, we're going to sow the equivalent of one week's income. I know, said he, you don't need any more confirmation, probably. Oh, any will help. But this is just another one. This is another one, Pastor, just in case. So there's where we are. At a strategic inflection point with a decision to be made. Now, I began by saying the world is full of haters. Yes. Yes. Stand here. Okay, so when you showed that, that sidewalk, I said to myself, I've believed for a whole lot of concrete. Nearly one million square feet of it. And God has blessed me. I mean, he's blessed me. He's blessed me. And so when you said, now I'm believing for a driveway. Joni and I have been praying, you're our pastor. And we want to not only bless the church, but we, incidentally, we're sowing the largest resurrection seed this year we've ever sown. We've ever sown. And in fact, we sowed it already two months ago. I like to get mine in the ground early. I mean it. Huh? 
The sooner you plant it, the sooner you can harvest. This is true. So, so when you said, and now bless God, you sound like Brother Copeland. Bless God, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna get me a driveway. And 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 God said something, and I said, huh? So I think I'll just pay for your driveway. I'll just pay for your driveway. Because I can. Because I can. Because I didn't say, oh, oh, enough is enough. I, I don't want to believe you for prosperity, Lord. Yeah, I walk up by my pastor's driveway for him. And not blacktop either. Well, you can have blacktop if you want it. I put concrete. See, I got to say something. I didn't say anything about that sidewalk to try to no, yeah, no, 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 no. Don't give in to the haters. No, no. That, that's like people. Are, Here's the thing. That's, no, wait a minute. You just wait a minute. That's like people on the internet, you know. <laughs> The internet is the coolest thing. It has a button. Delete. Turn it off. Ban. I like to ban them. You don't have any more sense than that. You rebuke. You're, you're, you're cursing yourself. Cursing the things of God that you don't know anything about. Delete. Ban. You don't have something good to say on there. And don't you do it to any other preachers either. And I don't believe we're out there preaching. Well, turn them off then. Yeah, I feel like 1995 PRP today. All right, now go ahead with your exhortation. And uh, I don't deserve it. Yes, but you I do. Still, I still receive it. Hey. You don't have to deserve anything from God to receive it from Him. Ah, regardless of who it comes through, just say thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, praise God. And let me tell you something else. When that seed that he's sowing produces a harvest in his life, don't any of you start hating on him either. Just follow his example and do the same thing he did. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I feel a rejoicing spirit. Come on down here. Let's rejoice a little bit. Come on. We got time. It's just 1140. We got time. I want to glorify it. I want to praise it that the tumor's leaving your breast. I want to praise it that the prostate cancer is healed. I want to bless it that the ear problem is healed. To God. sickness, sin, poverty, come off of you. with the same spirit of rejoicing 
It's offering time. Be seated. Don't lose that. I don't want something else. Don't lose that. Hallelujah. 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 If you'd shout really loud, I feel about 15 people that the spirit of poverty is going to break off of. Be seated. Be seated. All right. Here's what we're going to do. In that same spirit of rejoicing, reach in front of you or behind you if you need an offering envelope. If you're giving by check, WHC or an Elkhart WHCE, if you're online right now, by the millions. Boy, if y'all would get a hold of this revelation, I think we could just about win the world to Jesus. You just get a hold of this and participate. You know, your Bible says, if you participate by reason of sacrifice, that means if you sow something, you shall become as one born in the house. That means the same anointing flows to you. We want it to flow to you. We want you to be blessed, saved, healed, delivered, prospered, free in Jesus' name. Why don't you click right now? Become a participant and not just a viewer. Amen. God doesn't promise blessings on viewers. He promises blessings on those who actively participate by faith. So right now, just go to that icon. Join us this morning. Hallelujah. If you're giving by your phone, which is the way Joni and I have given for over two years now, just the information is right there. It's so easy. Text the amount, five million, and text the amount and WHC to the number 45777. Once you do it one time, it just comes up on your phone, you click it, and before I say amen, you'll already have a receipt. Isn't that wonderful? And then we don't have to pay people to sit and figure it all up and mail you a receipt. You just get it right there. And we're so glad for it. Amen? Do, do I have anything I'm supposed to talk about? Huh? I can't read that, son. Just talk to me. Pastor. Just wait. We have, we have the cards. What cards? Everyone that received them as they come in, and we want them to feel, fill them out yeah. for the people that they're believing healing for this yeah. week. And we're gonna, the elders are going to put them on the cross All right. at the end of service. Okay. These crosses are anointed for their purpose. Now, were they already given cards? Yes, sir. Okay, this week, we're still believing for salvation for loved ones. The elders will attach these to the cross. We're praying and fasting for 40 days and 40 nights for everyone on these lists, believing that God will touch their lives. Today, I'm believing for the miracle of whatever you're believing for. Elders was a driveway. He can't put that down now. He had to come up with a new miracle. Just fill that out, place it in the offering container when it comes by, and we will attach them to the cross, the elders will, at the end of the service. If you're missing Wednesday night, this is the most miraculous season we have ever experienced on Wednesday night. Wednesday night attendance has grown 50% in the last 30 days. So something's going on. Come on, get in here and be blessed and be a blessing. So Next Harvest has their own cross. And uh, you can wait on the people, gentlemen. If you don't get your card filled out, that's okay. We'll have containers at the door. You can put them in there upon your exit. I just, I went to the children's cross. And on Good Friday, we're bringing all these crosses in here. Now these are the children's prayer requests. You want to hear some of them? I want, I want you to hear this. Do I have a camera? I don't. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Can you get, get in as close as you can? Okay. Can you read it? What does it say? 
as a child praying without anybody's prompting and putting on the cross please pray we have food and you think you're not wealthy somebody's child's over there in children's right now hungry so you say what are you doing about it I told the team to track them down they're not gonna be hungry and go to this church Pray for my, you like this, Fiaz. Pray for my Muslim friends to be saved. There's a child. There's a child. Pray for my mom and dad not to get a divorce. Are you going to pray? Pray for me and my sister to be friends. Now this one can really believe for a miracle. <laughs> Something about those 14 year old girls, boy, I'm telling you. They moved back in their bodies about 16. We do pray for that family in harmony. Please help my dad to stop smoking and drinking. These are the children. These are the children. God, heal me of my asthma. I pray that my grandma turns Christian and leaves an inheritance to her children's children. My mom had a stroke. She's so stressed out. Make my nightmares go away. You got more? <laughs> Please pray the school shooting stop. It's children. And Lord, we love our children. And Father, can I just ask you something? I was going to ask the Father to do it, but he's not the one going to walk back there. When you go pick up your children today, would you love on one of the Dream Team members and realize that's who they're ministering to. Right. While you're in here shouting and being blessed, yes. they're back there taking care of those children yes. with those kind of needs. So just encourage them today, will you? Will, will you do that? Yes. Encourage the ushers. Encourage the, the first uh, impressions folks. Encourage the worship team. Just encourage each other, amen? How many of you believe Palm Sunday, we're going to have a time? One week from this morning. Ushers, how are we doing? We're still working or are we finished? We're finished. All right. If you still have your card, ushers will...